I'm hovering just 500 feet above the slot machine capital of the world, a city better known for its one-armed bandits and its filmmakers. But true to form, somewhere down there, we might have a gentleman who would dearly love to hit the jackpot here in Las Vegas. He's the man behind such classic movies as the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed-up zombies, and the wonderfully titled Wack Thinker Boo Boo. Let's go say hello to Ray Dennis Steckler. <laughs> that should appeal to them. What do I think my appeal is to, yeah. to the public? Uh, I hope it's originality. I hope when they see my movies, they can say only one thing, that they've never seen one like it by anybody else or anything even close. I mean, that's what I strive for. I, I don't want to be like anybody else. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Look, then run for your life. Incredible is the word for the world's first monster musical. <laughs> This was the first of a series of bizarre, imaginative, low-budget films that Ray Dennis Steckler made in the 1960s. From the music and horror mishmash of creatures to the childish slapstick humour of the Lemon Grove kids, they varied enormously. Steckler's number one rule was never to work with a script. The result is frequently chaotic. Films often start as one genre and end up as another. Sacre bleu! <laughs> The Thrill Killers, for example, begins as a modern-day murder mystery, but by the end it appears to be a western, with a cowboy and cop involved in the final shootout. Another Steckler trademark is the use of family and friends in his films. This is a taste of Rat Finker Boo Boo, made in 1965. Steckler's pal, rock and roll singer Ronnie Haydock, serenades Steckler's then wife, Carolyn Brandt. The thing is, I always thought that one day he would walk up to the Academy Awards and pick up an Oscar. I always felt he could do it. Do you think there's still a chance? There's always a chance. <laughs> So, how did potential Oscar winner Ray Dennis Steckler get his start in the movies? Let's go back to the beginning. His first film was Wild Guitar, and Ray was just 24 when he was given the chance to direct by an aging B-movie producer called Arch Hall Sr. It was a good experience for me because I couldn't really change anything in the script. He was right there all the time, and I found out that's not the way I like to make movies. I like to sort of make an adventure out of it and see what happens each day by just being there and letting things flow. But with Arch Hall, you just couldn't distract from one line of dialogue, no matter how bad it was. And uh, we managed to get a few things in it, like uh, we put an ice skating sequence in it. An ice skating sequence that works best because of Ray's suggestion that they use one spotlight for the scene, a technique that his cameraman, Vilmos Sigmund, initially disliked. I kind of kidded him and said, man, someday you'll win an Academy Award with a lot of flares in your lens. It's the newest thing. And of course, Easy Rider came out and everything was a flare a few years later. And then Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Was that the name of that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Was that the same the guy? Yeah, he won the Academy Award for that. And there were a lot of flares in that one. So I like to think I, I sort of got him started in the right direction, you know. One good flare leads to another good flare. What happened after um, Wild Guitar? Did you return to a normal job or did you carry on making movies? Did I return to a normal job? I was working as a janitor then. Was that a normal job? <laughs> I was always cleaning up things. Uh, after Wild Guitar, now I made the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. I really know that something evil lies ahead for me. An unspeakable pit of dismal subhuman monsters who drew and gibber, moaning for the thrill of revenge. 
the world's first monster musical. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Now that's, a, that's an incredible title. How did, how did you come up on that? Uh, I, I don't know. We're just trying to come up with something that, that, you know, we didn't have a big budget, so I thought maybe a big title might look a lot better on the marquee. Maybe people think we spent more money or something. Just as incredible as the title is the plot. Creatures tells the story of a carnival gypsy who has a passion for collecting acid-scarred zombies and hypnotizing innocent young men to kill on her behalf. Spectre's favorite actor, Cash Flagg, takes the lead role. He's also the gypsy's first victim. Pretty weird stuff, eh? And all this was shot without a script. People always ask me why I don't have a completed script. Well, every time we have a completed script, the movie never seems to get made because we can never afford to shoot what's on the script. You know, you need all these things. Then you start spending all this time locating these things that you need for the movie. And by the time you get all that done, it's too late to make the movie. A philosophy which helps to explain why Creatures turned into a musical. We had a lot of musical costumes and wardrobe from a couple of shows here in Las Vegas. Plus we had a lot of music that a friend of mine, Libby Quinn, wrote. And we found during the making of the movie that it wasn't really wasn't looking like an MGM musical. I mean, we didn't have to work at it to make it look that bad, but, you know, nevertheless, it, it turned out that way because all the girls were out of step and so forth in the musical numbers, but they didn't have any time to really rehearse. It was like do or die, and so we shot like six or seven numbers in one day without rehearsal time, so I thought they did a great job. Again, we're getting back to my formula. What do we have before we start the movie? Not what we have to look for. one he stabbed me with a knife I I was done in, in quite a few of the films a lot of our friends used to say Carol I think he's trying to tell you something if there's a lesson to be learned it's never marry a director here we see Carolyn playing a dancer being brutally murdered by Ray's leading man the hypnotized cash flag <laughs> kids you know can be hypnotized to go out and murder people I mean really it's not too much upstairs but you know the funny thing is a lot of people identified with him through the years I guess this was cash flag yeah cash flag yeah he's a nice guy he's hard to work with though uh, he gets a little temperamental once in a while you got to straighten him out look can't we change the subject all right but I sure would like to know what happened after I left <coughs> As you can see, it doesn't take much to trigger cash off, but hypnotism was also a gimmick that Ray employed to publicize the film. We had uh, uh, some sort of hypnotic eye working for a while where we would tell people that they would become hypnotized and drawn into the movie. Open your eyes, Jack. We got a lot of uh, flack on that because uh, no. some people were, you know, they see the spinning wheel and actually they start to get hypnotized. No. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people can be put to sleep so easily by something that's just repetitious like a spinning wheel. We had uh, some hypnotic uh, group come in while we were shooting and they made us take a little circle on the spinning wheel and, and mess it up. If you look closely on the film, it looks terrible because we put some black masking tape or gaffer's tape on it so that it would not uh, hypnotize people in the audience. I mean, they were really upset with us when they saw what we were doing because they were always afraid that we give hypnotism a bad name yeah. and just in case the audience fell asleep watching the hypno wheel Ray had another trick up his sleeve we 
woke him up. We woke him up. You know, we had live monsters jumping out of the stage and out of the screen and on, off the stage into the audience. You, you had that in Incredibly Strange Creatures? Oh, yeah. In fact, a couple times, Ray himself was in the monster suit. One time, he nearly got pelted to death, I think. 